Welcome to Rethink, the podcast that empowers you to challenge your existing beliefs and embrace new, more productive ways of thinking. Here at Rethink, we believe that the key to self-fulfillment lies in shattering old thought patterns and adopting new mindsets that support personal growth and empowerment. With expert guests and thought leaders from a wide range of fields, we explore strategies and insights that can help you achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. From relationships to career, business ownership, and health, you are the source of your own success. We're just here to help you tap into your true potential and create a brighter future. So join us on the journey of personal growth and empowerment, and let's rethink what's possible for our lives. Interested in starting your own podcast? Well, that's what we're talking about today on Things You Should Know, so stick around. The Things You Should Know podcast, it's our pleasure to welcome you each and every week. Some of the topics that we discuss on this podcast range from tech to innovation, health and wellness. You picked a great day to join us. We've got a great podcast ahead for you. Sit back, relax, listen and enjoy. Thank you for joining us at Things You Should Know podcast. Are you looking to get your money right? Well, why don't you check out SoFi? SoFi is an FDIC insured nationally chartered bank that offers checking and savings account and many more platform products. SoFi became a bank in order to bring you the best features, including a simple market leading interest rate of 1.5%. Uh, percent API across all of SoFi checking and savings accounts. SoFi is one of the largest student loan refinancing companies. The online lender has refinanced over $30 billion worth of student loans for more than 375,000 of its members while delivering many features not offered by banks, credit unions, and other traditional lenders. So why don't you go over to uh, our show notes and check out SoFi if you're looking for student loan refinancing, private student loans, uh, personal loans, you know, you can use for travel or family planning. What about mortgages? Maybe you want to refinance your mortgage or cash out refinance. There's auto loan uh, financing or refinancing. They are good with investing, and that includes EFTs and, yes, crypto. They have credit cards and their simple banking, checking and savings account. They do offer life insurance, homeowners insurance, renters, and auto. You can do estate planning, insight planning, property tracking, business solutions for small business as well. Why don't you go into our show notes today, check out SoFi, help out with the uh, podcast and help out yourself and get your money right. Hey guys, welcome into the podcast. Today's going to be a little different, a little bit of the same, but a little different. I'm going to talk to you personally about how I started this podcast. I have two podcasts. I'm going to talk to you about my podcast journey and just kind of bring it closer to you. You know, some of you have been listening to us uh, since day one. So we're family at this point. So we're just going to bring it, you know, just zoom in a little bit more. Uh, one of the reasons is one, we want to make it a little bit more personable, personal to you guys. You get to know me and get to know what we're doing here at Things You Should Know a little bit better, a little bit history of the podcast, how it started. But also, many of you may be interested in starting a podcast. You have a passion for helping people and spreading a message and you have a passion for something and maybe the way to express your passion 
can be through and via a podcast uh, like the one you're listening to now. So in uh, conjunction with what our core message is here, which is helping people, uh, I want to tell you what I did. So and what I am currently doing to to make this productive, to make it still fun and also profitable and productive uh, because we've been doing this right now. We're in our second season. So with over, oh, man, we had 110 shows in the first season, and right now we're on show 40. So it's 150 shows. That's some dedication, and that's some time management. Uh, that's It has to be something that you're passionate about. So I want to talk to you guys today and see where you are and see if I can help you if this is something that you want to do. I'm going to tell you about my journey. I'm going to give you some understandings of what it takes to start a podcast, you know, from choosing a topic all the way down to uh, getting it on the correct platform, monetized and all of that good stuff. So stick around because that is our destination. The value for today is understanding how to start a podcast in 2022. I'm going to give you some of my personal experience and pros and cons of, of having a podcast. Okay. But before we get going, I would like to welcome our First timers, first timers, welcome aboard. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Please make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the podcast, whatever platform you're currently uh, listening to us on, because we are available on all platforms. I'll tell you, our most uh, listened to platform, believe it or not, is Amazon Echo. Amazon Echo is where we're most listened to. That's followed by our iHeartRadio. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and several others. So we are on Spotify. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on Stitcher. We are everywhere. And thank you guys for for listening to us. Every now and then, I like to jump around in our information here and tell you what's popular on the podcast. Um, Before I do that, I I, uh, did welcome the first timers, old timers. You guys are obviously a big part of our success. Many of you, like I said earlier, have been listening to us since day one, show one. And you continue to come back week after week and download and listen. And to say thank you just doesn't seem like that's enough. Uh, But thank you is what we have to offer. So thank you for continuing to support the podcast. Many of you send really kind uh, notes in Messenger. And thank you for your patience because... I don't do Facebook a whole lot, so sometimes I miss messages, but when I do see them, uh, I always respond to you guys. So thank you for your kind sentiments and kind words. Please continue, all of you, to forward your favorite podcast, your favorite podcast to your family members, loved ones, friends, associates, coworkers, you name it. Uh, just one podcast. Find your favorite and just forward that one podcast in hopes that it will be beneficial to your uh, network and hopefully it'll encourage them to listen. Um, some of our most popular shows, this is interesting as well, cause I'll look at this and it changes depending on what's going on in the world. So our top five shows right now, one, two, three, four, five. Number five is, uh, want to sound more confident, avoid these 11 words and phrases that make you look weak. According to grammar experts, that's number five. Now, number four is the top 10 most commonly asked interview questions. This one was number one for a very, very long time. And now it sits at number four. This was like, I think, my second podcast that I recorded. So this one has some legs on it. Uh, Number three, how helping others is really about benefiting you. This was one of my favorite podcasts because it's about helping people at, at its core. It's about using the best of you uh, to help others and how actually and in the long run, you really benefit. You really benefit. So that's number three. Uh, Number two is eight drug free ways to battle anxiety. Eight drug free ways to battle anxiety. Such a good podcast because there are a number of people dealing obviously with anxiety. 
probably all of us do on some level, some of us better than others. And because there are so many drugs in the marketplace now and people are becoming dependent upon them and people begin and are having more anxiety in our communities, it is um, of great benefit to try to offer alternative solutions for folks uh, that are battling anxiety. So that is number two, and and I know exactly why they're so popular because so many people are dealing with anxiety. But I got to be honest with you, our number one really surprised me because this one jumped up to number one two or three weeks ago, and boy, has it remained number one, and it is number one by a long shot now. The title, Israeli-Palestinian Conflict Explained, A Simple Timeline and Map. This is almost double the amount of downloads as any of the others I described to you. Now, when I first saw this, now we recorded this. Let's see. Let me go back. We recorded this May 18, 2021. Okay. So when it first came out, um, you know, it had some decent downloads. Uh, I I think at that time, though, there was some conflict uh, in in that region. Well, obviously, I mean, there's always seemingly conflict in the region, but it was very newsworthy. Let me just say it like that, because sometimes, uh, you know, there are things that don't make the news, but still I would consider newsworthy. But anyway, uh, for now, this one has jumped up to number one by a long shot, and it made me go back and look to see, hey, is there something else going on? I don't know. I can't explain it. But uh, for some reason, lately, there are a lot of folks that are listening to that particular podcast, Israeli Palestinian Conflict Explained, a simple timeline and map. One of the things I do learn about that podcast, I do recall, is that I was unaware of a lot of the history and a lot of the specifics as it relates to how uh, the Israelis even got in that region to begin with. So if you don't know, then why don't you go and listen today uh, to that podcast, obviously after you finish finish this one. And before we get started, one of the things that I love to do, love, love, love to do is I always like to look at where folks around the globe are enjoying Things You Should Know podcast. So I want to just kind of share with you the top five countries the top five cities and locations uh, where people are currently uh, listening to to this to this podcast. OK, um, one of the things you'll learn in the podcast today is that we use Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout is our podcasting platform, and I find it to be very informative. It's very intuitive. It's very user friendly. Uh, prior to Buzzsprout, we did use Lipson. Lipson, um, I don't have anything bad to say about them. I just um, thought Buzzsprout was a little bit more intuitive, and they they provided us with more tools, more uh, tools for website, more tools for monetization, uh, more tools as it relates to our episodes and the descriptions and things like that. And we're going to go over this uh, as we get into the podcast. So, What are the top five countries that listen to this podcast? Well, we're in the United States, so it makes sense that uh, the United States would be number one. Number two is Canada. Not by a lot, though, because here's Australia right in the neck and neck of uh, number two and three. They're almost the exact same numbers. And then United Kingdom is fourth and New Zealand. New Zealand comes in at five. So we're being listening to uh, in a lot of different places, uh, far, far away from where I live here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Folks in India and Ireland and the Netherlands are listening to us as well. So thank you guys so much for listening. What are some of the top cities? Some of the top cities. Uh, Number one, our top city where we're getting the most downloads. Thank you, Irving, Texas, for listening to Things You Should Know podcast. Irving, Texas, uh, all time uh, episodes has downloaded the most. The second, this is probably going to surprise you, is Sydney, New South Wales. Sydney, New South Wales. Thank you guys for listening there in New South Wales. And number three, 
super surprising to me because I have no idea where this is, but we are so appreciative of the good people in Filler or Filer, F-I-L-E-R. I think it's Filer. Filer, Idaho. Filer, Idaho. I've never heard of Filer, Idaho. And when I saw that, I said, I've got to figure out where this place is. But thank you guys so much. You come in as number three of listening all time and all time downloads for for this podcast. So thank you guys so much. Uh, the next two are places in the United States. Uh, one is a place called Somerville, South Carolina. I am from South Carolina. I, I don't know if I know where Somerville is. My feeling is that it's around the midpoint um, Columbia area, uh, Orangeburg. But one of you guys can tell me in the comments if you like. And then coming at number five is Atlanta, Georgia. So thank you folks here uh, in my hometown of Atlanta of supporting the podcast. That means a lot uh, to me. Thank you guys so much. Uh, but there's so many more cities. There's St. Paul. There's Philadelphia. Uh, there's Fort Worth. Uh, there is um, Austin and you've got West Palm Beach. And, and what about Brampton, Ontario and Spokane? There are so many cities that are are listening to us uh, here on the podcast. And sometimes when I'm sitting in the studio and recording, I'm not really uh, focused, obviously, on on who's listening uh, specifically uh, because I kind of all I kind of see everybody as one audience, uh, you know, one community. Uh, But when I see the information broken down like this, as we get into um, the, the podcast setup, it's it's just incredible. Uh, to see the detail uh, of where your listeners are and to be surprised to know that people in Newfoundland or people in New Zealand or people in British Columbia or, you know, there are folks in, I don't know, Perrysburg, Ohio, a place that I've never heard of or, or been to, Winnipeg. Um, you've got folks in Prague. There, there's so many folks that are listening uh, to the podcast. So I don't care if it's one or two downloads in India or if there are a couple hundred downloads uh, o- over in Scotland. It just uh, touches you, touches me to know that people in Panama City, the providence of Panama, uh, are listening to this podcast. OK, so um Let's get into the content today, and uh, I, I kind of gave you all that detail for a reason, uh, because if you're considering um, getting your message out to people, it shouldn't matter who, but you obviously want to get it to the right people. You want to find your tribe, find your group. Podcasting is definitely a way to do that, and I've you know, in a very simple way, just sort of went over with you uh, what we've been able to accomplish in the last year or so, almost two years uh, soon. Uh, We're coming up on over a hundred thousand downloads. And that's a pretty big deal for us because number one, we've not put in any uh, advertisements, uh, any money into advertising. So we've not done any YouTube ads or, or any Facebook ads, anything like that. A hundred thousand downloads in less than two years is a big, big number. That's a big number. Uh, a lot of times folks are paying for that type of um, that type of feedback and content or in terms of uh, the number of downloads. So we're really, really proud of that. And we have you guys to thank because. We've grown organically. So we know, I have a very strong feeling that our audience uh, is our tribe. Uh, We didn't, you know, um, we didn't create any fraudulent or or, or, um, subsequent audience by some sort of, you know, quick hit advertising. We've grown organically. I think that people that are listening to us actually like our content and relate to it. And that's very important. Uh, I don't know if your goal when you get into podcasting is to reach a certain number or to reach a certain audience or just to be effective. You've got to decide that. Uh, But ours is to be effective and to reach our tribe. And I believe that we've done that and we continue to do it. One of the reasons why I continue to ask for you to forward uh, your favorite uh, content, your favorite 
podcast to your friends or family members or loved ones, anyone in your network, is because uh, we have a certain position in our tribe and people may take your word uh, for listening to this. They say, okay, I really like this podcast. I want you to listen to it. Uh, I think you will enjoy it. They will just do it because you asked them to do it. And many of you have been so kind as to do that call to action week after week. You send it to your sister, your brother, your your coworker, or whoever, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, and you guys have helped us grow organically. So thank you for that. All right, so uh, Joe, John, Mary, Keisha, uh, whoever, we are passionate about a topic, and we want to start a podcast here in 2022. And yeah, it's August, but who cares? Uh, we're going to to do this. We're going to launch out. Uh, what do we need to do, Kelly? What do we need to know? Uh, what happened when you started your podcast? How did you begin? What are some of the pitfalls? What are some of the things that we need to watch out for? Um, can you help us kind of jumpstart this? What's your best advice for folks who are looking to start? Do what you do in terms of uh, having a podcast here in 2022. Well, we're going to get to that. Here are some of the things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about choosing a topic, choosing a topic that you are committed to. And I use those words very carefully because you need to be passionate about what it is that you're doing. And you also should differentiate between things you like and things your audience may like. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Number two, you want to be able to pick a podcast name. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's an offer we thought you'd be interested in. Are you looking to develop and create stunning coursework? Uh, launch your stunning academy website in a snap. You can choose from among 50 plus designer made, ready to go, industry specific site templates to launch your website fast and with confidence. It's very simple, very powerful. They're flexible courses. You can wave goodbye to dull educational content. There are countless ways to package and distribute your learning content. Create listed or private courses that can be paid or free courses, or you can drip feed your content to build and to nurture your audience the way that you want. You can create compelling and interactive courses, leverage the most rich library of learning activities, and undoubtedly the most customizable course player in the market to build flexible learning experiences to keep your listeners engaged. And lastly, be the boss of your content and design your final course product exactly as you envision it. Preview it as you build it in real time. Get it up and running fast than you ever have imagined. Why don't you go down the show notes, guys, today and uh, click on Learns World. If you're interested in building courses that matter, you can monetize, create memberships, create courses, and create passive income for yourself. So support our sponsor, Learns World. That one, I wish I had a chance to do over. I'll be quite honest. I didn't do all my homework when I did that one. I don't have a problem with our name, but uh, when it comes down to it, there are a lot of there are several podcasts with the same name. So I have to differentiate it some way and I'll tell you how we do it. Number three, uh, you want to be able to write a very compelling podcast description because one, you want to gain the attention of a, a particular audience um uh, subscription or listener, you want to be able to get their attention, but you also want to be searchable. You want folks to be able to find you online and on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and Spotify and things like that. And the first introduction they have to you, quite honestly, is your artwork and your description. That's how they're going to decide to hit play or not. How did you decide when you picked us? How do I decide when I pick a podcast? That's kind of the way we do it. Uh, number four, decide on your podcast format. What will it look like? What's the episodic description? The episodic description is a layout of each episode. Uh, will it be 30 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes? Is it just loosey-goosey, you're just going to talk until you give out? It all has to be decided beforehand. 
All your content needs to be organized. You want to be able to have a regular uh, record date to kind of get your audience uh, used to getting your content on a regular day of the week so that they can anticipate and you deliver and your audience can build. Number five, you want to get your podcast artwork and music created. Uh, We'll talk uh, ways to do that, you know, for very little. You know, many of you have heard me talk about Fiverr and other types of uh, online platforms where very talented and skilled professionals are offering their services as it relates to creative that you can get them to do uh, openings for you or if you're not, you know, fluent in GarageBand. Speaking of which, which tools do we use, Kelly? What do we record on? That's number eight, record your podcast episodes. Number six is purchase your podcast equipment and test your podcasting software. Number seven, we're going to talk about choosing a podcast hosting service, which probably is the most, I would say the second most important part of all of this, because you having an excellent, excellent, excellent content uh, idea show, but on a platform that's really not supporting you, Uh, many people may not ever hear it, and that would be a shame. Number nine, um, how do you let the world know about your new podcast? How did you get your message out, Kelly, initially? How did you grow to thousands of downloads each week and each month? How did you do that? And the elusive number 10, how do you make money podcasting? Okay, okay. So let's start at the beginning. Why and how? Well, I have, I think I've told you guys this before. I have actually two podcasts. This is my second one I started. First podcast was a labor of love. Uh, Not that this one isn't. Of course it is. Otherwise, I wouldn't be on the 150th show. Uh, But my first podcast was a Walt Disney World podcast And it's something that I still do, and I do with my daughters. And we started it, I think we started it right before, I think we started in 2019, and then obviously 2020 happened. And, you know, we did, I don't know, we could have started it before then. I think we've got about three seasons so far with My Disney Brain. That's the name of the podcast. So if you go to YouTube... Uh, You type in My Disney Brain, B-R-A-I-N, you'll be able to find uh, a lot of our shorts and then a lot of our recordings as relates to the podcast. Needless to say, we're big Disney fans. Uh, We would go to the park every year. And when we would come back home, we had these compelling conversations. Even on the drive back home, we'd have these compelling conversations about the trip how this went or how that went, what was the best food, what was the best portion of the trip, which attractions were the best, et cetera, et cetera. And I just thought, based on all the stuff I saw on YouTube, I really wanted to have an outlet to share our passion for Walt Disney World, for Disney stuff, with an audience. And I just knew they would be there. Here's what I found. Number one, that I was right. Uh, but also, number two, that is, that was a crowded space. And initially, it didn't matter because we were just doing it because it's something that we love doing. And being able to do the podcast with my daughters is just an added bonus. It's an added bonus to be able to come to our studio, sit and talk about something that we love and record it and not um, and just know that, you know, our kids, my, my grandkids at some point can listen to this, and it'll just always be there. We shared our love for Walt Disney World, but we also shared information that was pertinent to Walt Disney World guests. How do you get there? What do you do when you get there to be most effective? What are some of our our best tips and tricks and things like that? So the podcast was a help meet for, for many people. Many people wrote us and texted us that, hey, Man, you, I, 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 this one lady, I can't recall her name, uh, but she's on our website. You go to our website also. It's My Disney Brain, just the way it sounds, MyDisneyBrain.com. And she, I think her comments on the website, she said, you know what? I found your show by accident. I was on my way to the parks. She had several kids. And she said, oh, my God, it was very informative. 
I listened to it the whole way to the part, and it really helped us out. That's exactly what it is, you know, what we were trying to do. We wanted to be able to help people when they get to the park. So many times we'd be at the park and we'd see people overwhelmed, kids crying, parents almost crying, and they're just not having what we believe to be the happiest time in the happiest place on earth. So in addition to our desire to want to express our uh, passion for Walt Disney World, we also wanted to help people uh, to be able to have the best time that they could when they go, when they go to the bars. So uh, I did start the Disney podcast first, and it taught us a lot. We were on a different platform. It helped me uh, to understand that there are other platforms out there that may be more useful. Uh, it also helped me to get used to GarageBand because it is not for everything that I love about Apple being intuitive. GarageBand is pretty difficult. And I say that with relatively uh, uh, r- r- relative humor because Apple, for the most part, you know, when you get your new iPhone, no one ever looks at the instruction manual. You don't even realize it's one in that box. Why? Because it's so intuitive. You can just turn it on. It just kind of works the way you think it would, and it's easy to do. Well, Mac and MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and all that is sort of the same, but, man, GarageBand takes some understanding. And if you're not an engineer, sound engineer, uh, then you're going you're gonna to have to kind of make some errors uh, before you get right. There have been several times when I first started recording that I forget, I forget something and then do a whole show and there's nothing recorded. Or I had to understand how to um, insert certain sounds or how to build uh, on some of these timelines. So understanding uh, GarageBand, working through uh, those two and three seasons at My Disney Brain helped me to become very proficient in my recording mechanism, my, my recording software. So that's something you have to think about. What is going to be your recording software? What do I recommend? I do recommend GarageBand, primarily because that's what I use. That's what I use. Now, um, what's, what are you passionate about? That's kind of where you want to start. With me, as I was doing my Disney brain, I began to want to talk about things that were not Disney-related, things that were going on in the world that were not necessarily Disney-related. And that was the main reason why I started second podcast, which is the one you listen to now. Things you should know. Well, we started and I, I had so many ideas and topics. I just started recording. I think for a time now, I was recording almost every day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's a podcast we thought you'd like. Hi, it's Tahimia. It's Cam. Rachel. And Amani, your hostesses at The Art of Making It Work, the podcast that knows life doesn't need any help being hard, but sometimes we need a little help making it easier. On our show, we discuss an array of topics ranging from travel to friendships and even finances with a whole lot of girl chat in between. We're here to give you research-based life hacks and initiate discussions to help you and one another navigate this thing called life. So tune in to The Art of Making It Work every Monday for new episodes wherever you stream your podcast content. And that's another thing you want to think about. What's your schedule and what can you tolerate? Because you don't want to burn out. You don't want to inundate your audience. You want to be able to sustain and commit to um, the life of this, whatever that may be. It may be. Maybe it's five years or 10 years. Who knows? I I looked at some podcasts in my research. Some of these folks have been recording for eight, nine years, you know, weekly, a couple times a week. That takes some commitment. So you want to think about um, your content, your ideas based on your longevity. So don't be in too much of a rush. What I would say, uh, take your time, do your homework. One of the things I'm proud of is that I believe that the listeners on this podcast can feel that we've done some work before we get behind the mic. We're just not reading articles or giving you our opinion all willy nilly. 
there's a conversation happening. Our goal is to provide you with information, mostly scientific information, so that you can make a decision for yourself and for your life, for your family, for your quality of life. And we take the time to do that, and we want you to know, and we want you to feel like we've done that. Are we going to sit here and read Wikipedia all day? You can do that yourself. I want to bring you some information that you potentially didn't know. And that takes some time, some research. Everybody has access to the Internet. So finding out something that's relatively obscure in, in, a, in a certain sense is hard to do. Uh, even if you find out common information to convey it to your audience in a way that seems like it's a new idea uh, also takes a certain skill set. And hopefully, because you're still listening, uh, you would agree that we can do it here. One of the things I said that I would do differently is to pick in the name. I really like the name of the podcast. Uh, it's become a little problematic because we have so many other podcasts that are named the same thing. Fortunately, uh, in terms of niche, uh, we use the same sort of niche element as we did with my Disney brain. Well, with Disney, it is pretty crowded in terms of that uh, niche in that particular arena. A lot of people love Disney. A lot of people love to report on Disney, YouTube, podcasts, and otherwise. Uh, my um, indirect mentor is a gentleman named Lou Mangello, and he had the number one podcast for on um, number one podcast on Apple Podcasts for a while there. Number one or number two? I can't remember which one it is. It, I think it could have been number two. But even at that, that's a that's a huge accomplishment. And Lou uh, is WDW Radio, and it is Walt Disney World uh, Center information. He's a fantastic uh, uh, host and uh, podcast. It's very, very great. If you just type in Lou Mangello at Apple Podcasts, you'll see. I even had him on one of our uh, recorded shows for my Disney brain. So if you know Lou, if you want to listen to that podcast, just go over to YouTube, type in my Disney brain, you'll go to our channel and you can uh, find the uh, the uh, StreamYard podcast that we did. And Lou was a part of it. So Lou was my uh, mentor there. And then on this side of the fence, uh, for all things podcast, I really like um, I, I really like this next gentleman. He he has so much, um, man, so much information. I seem, It seems like I kind of started watching him on YouTube. And when he, I don't want to say when he first came out because I don't really know what it was. But when I needed tutorials and questions answered, Pat Flynn, Pat Flynn uh, was a trusted voice as it relates to YouTube, uh, or I'm sorry, as it relates to podcasting that I would go to time and time again. I don't care if it was how to start the podcast. I don't care what equipment I needed. Even now, I am subscribed to his podcast. His podcast is entitled Smart Passive Income. Also, his blog is the same and website, smartpassiveincome.com. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with uh, Pat as your as your mentor. Uh, virtually speaking, of course, he, he, I don't know Pat personally. Uh, my point is I found someone that I felt was a subject matter expert and was having success in an arena that I wanted to do the same. So I followed them. Quite simple. Quite simple. OK, so what would I have done differently about the name? I would have done more research. I would have made it. um I would have probably called the podcast something different, something unique. Um, but I didn't. And I was I think I was in a in a hurry to get started. I had all these ideas and that's what happened. I'm not complaining because, like I said, we we're getting tons and tons of views and downloads and all these sorts of things. So I'm grateful for people still finding us. Uh, one of the things that we do and have done in our market is is to niche it down to, um, uh, for example, with my Disney brain, the tagline is a brown eyed perspective on the happiest place in the world. Well, although the Disney uh, arena is, is pretty crowded, YouTube and otherwise, it's not a whole lot of African-Americans doing it, though. OK, it's not a whole lot of that perspective. 
So things you should know, um, I've listened to a couple of the other podcasts that had the same title. Uh, not a lot are African American. So uh, I think you can hear it in my voice. I also think by my icon and my logo that you can tell that this is a, um, a brown eyed perspective. And I think a lot of people can appreciate that. So uh, we we have to separate ourselves some some way, some somehow to get, you know, uh, noticed. So when you're thinking about your topics and you're thinking about your podcast name, think about things that are unique about you that you want to celebrate. Think about things that are unique about you, your message, your passion that you want to celebrate. When you do that, write a compelling podcast description. No one should be able to talk more about your podcast than you. No one. No one should be able to talk more about your podcast than you. Uh, While you don't want to inundate people with information, you do want to be as descriptive and engaging and um, forthcoming with what it is you plan to do. You know, here at Things You Should Know, uh, we always say our our effort is singular. We want to, our goal is to provide you with information. Why? We feel that information empowers people. Why? Because empowered people make better decisions. That's important because better decisions will affect your quality of life. And we all want good quality of life. So you have to decide what is it you're passionate about and how do you convey that to your audience? At My Disney Brain, the same way. We wanted to provide our perspective on what it was like going to the happiest place on the earth with brown eyes. That's it. And people were captivated by that. People enjoy that. Okay? So write a compelling podcast description and make sure you keep it close. I would create an Evernote file or a note file or some sort of electronic file where you have that podcast description at your fingertips because you're going to need it for your website. You're going to need it for your Patreon. You're going to need it for so many other things. And you want to be consistent. You don't want to say different things in different places. You want to confuse people. When you create your YouTube channel, when you create your Instagram, you want to make sure that uh, compelling podcast description is the same in every place. Okay. All right, number four, decide on your format. This one's probably the easiest part of all this because it's really no wrong answer. Uh, How long is your podcast going to be? What format will you have? Format really is what is your intro? How long is it? Uh, What do you do after the intro? What's your welcome like? Uh, What's your, do you have any commercials? Do you have any sponsors? Uh, do you have any call to actions and, and, and how long does it take for you to get into your core content? Here's the thing I would suggest. I would suggest that um, you actually, this is what Lou told me. Um, find your voice. The only way that you're going to find your voice, because a lot of people are nervous about podcasting just like a lot of people nervous about showing their faces on YouTube. Um, if you're nervous about podcasting, the only way to get past that is to start podcasting. It's a little off-putting to hear your voice so much at first in your car and in your headsets, but you got to get used to it. You got to get used to it to the point where it seems like it's somebody else talking to you. You got to get used to it to the point where you're willing to to listen to every single podcast to check for errors, to make sure it's compelling, to make sure it's something that you would want to listen to yourself. So you got to get past yourself. Um, So maybe that isn't the easiest step, but it's something that you need to do if you want to if you want to podcast. So decide on your format. Are you going to be doing interviews? Are you going to be a solo uh, uh, host, you know, for the most part, um, uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm a, so- yeah, I, I'm a solo host, but we do, you know, great number of interviews here. And I actually, I think you guys enjoy them because I mean, you guys download them a whole lot. Uh, I do have guests on, but for the most part, you guys are listening 
to me. And you're inviting me into your cars, into your offices, into your homes, uh, on your family trips or wherever it is you're going, you're listening to this. And I want to make good um, use of that time. So uh, I want to come across as friendly and informative and uh, provide you with exactly what I say I'm going to provide you with in a reasonable amount of time. I think we've done podcasts before that have gone probably an hour and a half, maybe the longest, you know, when we had, in, you know, other people on. Uh, but for the most part, we average between 35 minutes and an hour. Sometimes we have what's called a quick hit where we just kind of get in and get out and give you some powerful information empowering information that day and you can get back to your day. Um, and other times I think you want to listen longer. I think to myself, what are the more compelling podcasts that I'd like to listen to? I'm a podcast when I fly person because I don't particularly enjoy flying. So I like to get my mind off of flying and I love listening to long podcasts, mostly about Disney. If I'm driving, uh, yeah, I'd like to listen to longer podcasts because I feel like someone else is in the car with me if I'm driving, if I'm, you know, doing a solo trip. If I'm around the house cleaning up or doing a project in the yard or something, yeah, it doesn't require a very long podcast, but I do like compelling information. So think about your listener, think about the end product, and think about what your podcast format will be. Number five. Number five is your artwork and music. So... What do you enjoy? What type of music, uh, royalty free, of course, can you utilize that can really promote your podcast? If you listen to this podcast, things you should know, on the way in, it sort of sounds like you're about to go to a news channel. I mean, I, I found it real and I really liked it. It was royalty free. Again, I'm relatively, ja uh, you know, a little jazzy now on the garage band so I can edit sounds and things like that. So I made it my own. The podcast artwork, I got to tell you, I'm pretty good with Canva. So I didn't have to hire anybody to do it. If you want, um, yeah, I, I could do it. If, if, listen, if you reach out to me and say, hey, Kelly, I need some help with artwork. Is it something you can help me with? Shoot me an email uh, at uh, Kelly at things you should know now. NOW.com, and I'll see what um, we can work out. That's the other thing I meant to tell you. So my <laughs> website is up, and it looks great. Uh, but, of course, someone already had the domain of things you should know. So how did we make it unique? It now for us, and I'm going to put the link in the, in the bio and then in the show notes, so you're not going to have to type this in. But just so you know, in case anyone asks, the website address is actually things with an S you should know now. Things you should know now dot com is how you would get to our website. OK, so you're looking for some solutions on the artwork. I think I may be able to help you out. Otherwise, I suggest Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. Again, plenty of professionals there, plenty of very skilled professionals that can help you create a logo for your podcast. Number six. Number six is purchase your podcast equipment and begin to test out podcasting software. We already said that I would highly suggest and even recommend GarageBand for our MacBook Pro users. Um, I don't really have a suggestion for uh, PC folks. Let me see. Um, I think what, I, what I'll do... Yeah, here's what I'll do, because I know a lot of Windows people use Audacity. So maybe take a look at that Audacity. I have a very good article here from Pat Flynn that I used when I first started. And I'll put that on our YouTube page. I I'm sorry, Facebook page. I'll put it on the Facebook page, and you can check it out there. And there's even a link to one of the videos that he, can, he walks through equipment, kind of test them out so you can see what they look like. I'll tell you what I have. Uh, they're not the most expensive mics, but they were not inexpensive either. Uh, I have um, Snowball. I have two Snowballs, one black, one white. Uh, for some reason, I want to say I had three. I must have given the other one away. 
I had three mics in here at the studio at one point. But anyway, we have snowballs, and snowballs are very, uh, very good. I I think that our sound our sound quality is excellent. Uh, much of that has to do with the mics. Um, some of that has to do with the editing in GarageBand. Okay. Number seven is choose your podcast hosting service. Choose your podcast hosting service. Initially, I was with a platform called Lipson. Lipson. Uh, it was relatively manual. But I did like it, and we were there for more than a year and a half with the My Disney Brain content. We since moved over to Buzzsprout, B-U-Z-Z Sprout, S-P-R-O-U-T. While there are a number of podcasting platforms, I really, really enjoy Buzzsprout. Why? Uh, It's very intuitive, easy to use. Buzzsprout provides you with so many features. Uh, You have a website built in. You've got directories that tells you, hey, this is, these are places where you need to go and list your podcast. If you don't know, then you're not going to list your podcast in all these places. You're going to think just because I uploaded it to this website, then all of a sudden Apple Podcast has it. No, that's not the case. Buzzsprout can help you understand the whole process, and you can do it all from, the, from your site. You don't have to go all these different places. Uh, it helps you with monetization efforts. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to monetize a podcast, but Sprout brings it straight to you. Uh, you heard me read off all those statistics at the beginning of the podcast. Well, all that comes from Buzzsprout. They gather all that information and provide it to all of the podcasters. Uh, you have something called magic mastering, which means let's say you don't have the best sound. You don't have the best mics and you really can't afford it at the front end. Well, magic mastering is a way to really enhance the quality and the sound specifically of your podcast. It's a few dollars extra a month, but Buzzsprout does offer it. That wasn't anything that was offered when I was at a prior prior, um, uh, podcasting platform. Um, Also, um, you get a lot of resources. Uh, Buzzsprout has their own podcast where they talk to... um, creators about ways to enhance their product, their content, etc. And it's, it's really a, a good platform. So I've really enjoyed uh, Buzzsprout and we've been with them now, oh, better part of two years. And I've really enjoyed this experience. The other thing about Buzzsprout is it's not very expensive. Uh, let me jump over here to see what these... Um, plans are now. So for $18 a month, you can get six hours each month. Okay. Think about how much time that is. If you do six podcasts and they're an hour, that's more than a podcast a week. And you're only paying $18. With that, you get uh, to import, um, I think it's one or two. I don't remember. I think you get at least one additional podcast for free. Now, it doesn't stay up, you know, um, for years at a time, but you get, let's say, for example, you wanted to host Podcast A and Podcast B on Buzzsprout. You could pay $18 a month for Podcast A, and you could host Podcast B for free because it would come with um, with your package for Podcast A. I hope I'm making sense. And it would be $18 a month. The magic mastering that I talked to you earlier about is $9 a month. Either way, I'm going to leave a link in the bio for you. Click on that link and you can go to Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout will be able to help you out. Um, Well, after that, you've decided who you're going to go with. You got to start recording. You got to start recording your podcast episodes and then letting the world know where you are. We're going to hold right there, and we're going to talk about recording your podcast, how to launch that first podcast and start getting downloads, and then ultimately, how do you successfully monetize your podcast? We're going to do that in in, um, part two of uh, creating your own podcast here on Things You Should Know. 
I hope this has been very helpful. I wanted to just give you something today from me, and I thought certainly there are a number of people who want to outlet, help people, uh, you know, that they're, they're passionate about a thing and they want to get it out there, excuse me, get it out there. They want to start broadcasting and, and, and communicating with people. And uh, you don't have to be some great natural born speaker or communicator. You just have to be passionate about what it is that you're doing um, because people can tell if, you know, quite honestly, if you're bullshitting them. And your voice, your connectivity to your audience is your voice. And if there is some quality of deceit or non-integral quality there, people are intelligent. They'll be able to pick it up and it'll be a turn off. So today, our most important advice is to pick something you're passionate about and something that you can do or talk about ad nauseum. Okay, Uh, we'll come back in part two and we will give you uh, more information on being successful with your podcast. In the meantime, guys, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to read this article that I was talking about earlier from Pat Flynn, I'm going to go ahead and post it on our Facebook page and Facebook group. It will be there. It's an excellent, excellent article. Uh, Why don't you go and visit Pat at smartpassiveincome.com and learn more about Pat Flynn. I'm going to have some links in the show notes, so I want you to go there as well. Thank you guys so much, as always, for listening to uh, Things You Should Know podcast. Go check out that new website. I really like it. Thanks and have a good one. That's all for today's episode of Rethink. We hope that you've enjoyed this exploration of new ideas and perspectives and found valuable insights and strategies that you can apply to your life. Remember, you are the source of your own success and fulfillment. And by embracing new ways of thinking, you can unlock your true potential and yes, create the life that you truly desire. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to support the podcast by sharing it with your friends, your family members, your loved ones and associates, and even your followers on social media. Also, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to check out our show notes for free downloads and empowering ebooks that can help you on your journey of personal growth and empowerment. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We look forward to exploring more ideas and insights with you in the next episode of Rethink.